Good morning and welcome to Highway Online. I'm so glad you've decided to spend a portion of your morning with us here. If you're new to Highway Online this morning, maybe it's your first week, maybe it's your second week and you haven't let us know who you are yet, we want to know who's with us here at Highway Online on a Sunday morning and we want to send you a little more formal welcome as well in the mail. So if that's you this morning, it's maybe your first or second week or you've never let us know who you are, you can do that in, in one of two ways. You can take your phone and text the word welcome, just the word welcome, to 416-267-1189. Or if you're involved in the chat already, if you've logged in, there should be a button that's come up that says, we want to connect. And you can click that as well. Either way, follow the prompts and could give us the information we need so we can send you that more formal welcome. But I thank you for being with us here today at Highway Online. Speaking of the chat this morning, we encourage you, or I encourage you, to be part of the chat. I'm in the chat with you right now, and it's a great way for you to know who else is in the service, but for us to know you're in the service as well. We can say hi. If there's prayer requests, there's a place for you to make them there, and uh, we encourage you to be part of the chat. If, you've, if you're not in the chat, it's very easy to join. You'll see three gray lines in the orange bar at the top of your screen. You just click on those and then a drop down will come to either sign in or sign up. If you've never, if you've signed in before, just sign in. If you've never signed in before, hit sign up. It'll give you another pop-up which will say, uh, ask for an email address and a password. It's completely free, but we encourage you, be part of the chat this morning. Before we move on with the service, I have just a couple of quick announcements for you prior to going into worship and Pastor Dan's message. First of all, our Christmas Eve candlelight service is coming up next Saturday, December 24th at 6 p.m. This will be a one hour service. It's in person only. So we encourage you, if you can make it, to make it to the building that night for our Christmas Eve candlelight service and invite a friend to come with you if you'd like. And that way they can hear the message of Christmas as well on Christmas Eve. There's no Christmas Day service, either online or in person on December 25th, as that is Christmas Day, and we hope that you can take the morning and spend it with your family or whoever you're planning to celebrate the season with. Also, there'll be no online service on January 1st. There will be an in-person service, but no online service on January 1st. So we'll see you back online on January the 8th, but hopefully sooner in the building. We want to thank you for your ongoing support of the mission and ministries here at Highway Gospel. Your giving is much appreciated and very necessary for us to continue to, to run and function here at Highway. I want to remind you there's four ways you can give. You can e-transfer us, you can use the Tithely app, you can go to our website and click give, or right now in the chat if you're logged in, a button should have popped up to give, which will take you to the website to make your life even easier. Or you can mail a check to the church. Please don't mail cash. And I want to remind you this morning that if you want your giving for this year to be on this year's tax receipt, make sure your giving is in on or before December 31st. If it comes January 1st, that will go into next year's receipt for you. To find this morning's digital teaching notes, go to the Uversion app, open it up, look for Highway under events, and you'll find the notes to go along with Pastor Dan's sermon there for you. I want to encourage you to follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and check out our website on a regular basis at highwaygospel.ca. Glad you're with us this morning. I want to remind you before I go to prayer that Highway is a place to belong. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you this morning that we can gather in this medium, in this format this morning, we may be in different places, but we have gathered together to worship you, to hear your word, and to be changed by you. Holy Spirit, I pray for each one out there that's in need of healing this morning, whether that be physical, emotional, spiritual, Lord, that you right now by your spirit are with us. So reach down and touch lives and change lives. Heal bodies this morning, Lord. Heal minds this morning, Lord God. Forgive sins this morning, Lord God, as we sit in your presence as we're here in your presence. Lord, speak to us from your word this morning. Encourage us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you as we go to worship this morning. And really 
Good morning. Welcome back to the conclusion of our series, The Promise. It's been a great Christmas series, and I want to thank Trevor Miller and Outreach Ministries who have provided us the opportunity to purchase all the videos and graphics that you've seen, as well as the seed thoughts to make this series come together with those graphics. So thank you to them. During this Christmas Advent series, we've learned how the story of Christmas reminds us of God's hope, peace, joy, and love. Now you'll notice in front of me this morning a nativity set. And maybe you're familiar with these, maybe you're not, but you probably have seen them. And the nativity sets that we see are really all about the baby Jesus. As you notice even in our set today, Jesus is front and center. Everybody's attention is towards this baby 
that's born at Christmas time. And that's the way it's supposed to be. Christmas is all about being centered on Jesus. Now, you and I both know that the centering of Christ in Christmas has gotten lost in our world. Uh, many in our world think that Christmas is about gifts and lights and trees and parties, and, and all of that is true. And there's nothing wrong with any of that. But the problem is that when we do that, sometimes we replace Christ with all the other things. What we really need to do is bring Christ back to the center of Christmas. There's a promise made in the Old Testament by a prophet named Isaiah. And the prophecy he makes uh, speaks to what we're looking at in this nativity scene. This is just a, a picturesque version of it. But here's the promise that God made through Isaiah, recorded for us in Isaiah 7.14, where we are told, Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and we'll call him Emmanuel. Luke tells us about the birth of Christ. He records an account, and, and one of the great things about Luke's story is Luke gives us the backstory to this nativity scene. He tells us about an angel named Gabriel and a young teenage girl named Mary. And Luke records his story in Luke chapter 1, beginning at verse 26, where he says, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. So the angel Gabriel comes to Mary and tells her that she is going to conceive and have a son. And here is the big key to this story. This, this is so big that it's almost hard to believe. But, but Mary is a virgin. How many times in Luke's account did he tell us that? Now, Yes, you understood me. Mary is a virgin. Yes, it's exactly what I meant. Now, in this story, she is betrothed to a young man named Joseph. Now, many times we, we misconstrue betrothed as engaged in our culture, but it was very different almost 2,000 years ago in the culture where Mary and Joseph lived. To be betrothed would be to basically practically be married. The only thing that doesn't happen is they don't live together. And they don't live as a husband and wife. But everything else is as if they're married in this betrothal period. We don't have anything like that in the culture that we are today in North America. But this is where they were. So Mary is betrothed to Joseph now, we should not be surprised by the news of the angel. We should not be caught off guard that a virgin is going to conceive and give birth to a son because that's exactly what the prophet Isaiah had prophesied almost 700 years prior to this event. Now, as wonderful as God's plan is to use Mary and Joseph as part of sending the Savior into the world, it's really messing up their lives. See, this really wasn't the way they had drawn up their plans as they were planning to be married, as they were betrothed, as they were planning their future. I'm sure Mary and Joseph weren't thinking about, well, let's have a baby before we get married. That wasn't in their plans. Their plans were, let's, have, let's be newlyweds for a while before we bring kids into the picture. I'm, I'm sure kids were in the picture, but, but you know, a little bit down the road. This is not the life. This is not the dream that they had envisioned. 
And the Christmas story tells us or reminds us that when God shows up, our lives can be disrupted. See, Mary's life is about to be disrupted. Like I said, she's making plans to get married and start a new life with Joseph. She's not making plans to have a baby just yet. And worse off, how? How is she going to explain this pregnancy to Joseph, to her parents, to her friends, to the community? I mean, what are they all going to think? And Joseph's life also is going to be disrupted. I mean, picture it. Imagine it. Joseph's betrothed, Joseph's promised bride comes to him and says, Joseph, I'm pregnant. And Joseph's first reaction is, how could you do this to me? But, but then the kicker, because Mary says, but Joseph, I've not been unfaithful. This is God's fault. This is God's doing. This is God's plan. And Joseph is just supposed to believe her. See, Joseph felt crushed. We're going to talk about Joseph in a minute. But he feels crushed. Can you imagine the whispering that would be going on in the streets of Nazareth as Mary begins to show? See, when you are facing a disruption, you can either avoid it or embrace it. Those are really your only two options. Avoid it, embrace it. See, when God wants to do something new in your life, it will often feel uncomfortable. It could be hard. It, it might be exciting. Or it could be confusing. When a disruption comes in your life, how will you handle it? Will you avoid it or will you embrace it? See, maybe today you're feeling a disruption. Maybe, maybe there's a new job opportunity out there and you're not sure if you should grab hold of it. Maybe. Maybe you're, you're walking through a great loss right now, and it's painful and it's hard. Maybe you're in a relationship and it needs healing. Maybe you're worried about a housing situation. Maybe you're wrestling with a bad habit. Maybe you're facing an incredibly great need in your life. But no matter what it is, you're facing a disruption. You just don't understand how God could be in the middle of your disruption. But maybe, just maybe, God wants to bring something new into your life. But first, the disruption has to take place. How will you respond to the disruption of life. Well, look how Mary responds. In verses 34 to 37, we're told, How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who is said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. Can you imagine all the thoughts and feelings and questions that were flying through, through Mary's mind? I mean, I could just imagine her, her first thing is, what? Then she asked the angel, how could this be? Like, like Mary says, how? How can I be pregnant? I'm sure that my mother taught me the truth and I don't understand because she says, I am still a virgin. So how, how is this possible? And not only that, even if this is possible, you're telling me this, this child, this baby is who? The son of God? Who are reminded for nothing is impossible with God. You see, it's easy to make excuses. I mean, let's be honest, we're good at making excuses. We're good at making excuses as why God can't do anything in our lives, why God could do stuff for other people, but, but not for us. You ever said that? Well, God did, it, God did it for them, but he doesn't do it for me. I mean, we've said things like, there's no way God could love me. I've made too many mistakes. Or there's no way God could save my marriage. It's, it's just too far gone. Or 
There's no way God could rescue the relationship between me and my son or me and my daughter. There's no way that could be restored because there's just too much damage done. Too, too many harsh words have been spoken. Maybe you, you feel like well, God could never get me out of the debt I'm in. I, I'm, I'm doomed to this failure. Or maybe you've even said, there's no way I could make a commitment to God in my life because, you know, my life is just too busy with work and friends and family and, and enjoying life. There's no room for God. Or maybe you've made excuses, well, I can't stay clean and sober because the temptation is just too strong, too overpowering. Let's be honest. We all make excuses Excuses are easy. Excuses are easy. See, God isn't looking for your excuses. God is looking to see if you are willing to trust him. Are you willing to believe his word? Are you willing to do your part? See, Mary had many questions, but she didn't make any excuses. And she knows that as this happens to her, Soon, she's going to begin to show. Soon, everybody would know. Soon, the people would talk. And what would Mary's reaction be? Do I make excuses? Or do I embrace this disruption? See, Joseph was confused. He wasn't sure what to do. We don't have time to dig into Joseph's part of the story, but we do have to mention him here. I mean, he assumed the worst, and, and why wouldn't he? His betrothed, his, the love of his life comes to him and goes, I'm pregnant, and Joseph knows he had nothing to do with it. Mary has been unfaithful. In fact, the Bible would tell us that he had decided to divorce her quietly. That's how strong this betrothed was. Divorce her quietly. But God intervened in a dream and told him it was all good. It was all his doing. See, so Joseph chose to believe God. To believe what Mary had said to him. And to honor God with his life. See, it's time to stop making excuses. It's time to understand that maybe God has brought this disruption into your life in order to save you. That God loves you. God only has your best interests at heart. Don't see God's disruption in your life as something negative. Rather, learn to embrace it, to see what God wants to do in you and through you. Embrace God's love for you, that God will help you through the disruptions of your life. And I want you to notice how Mary responds in verse 38. She says, I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. See, Mary answered, with surrender. She responded with surrender. Whatever God was asking her to do, she was willing to do it. She did not have all the answers. There's going to be a lot that she's going to have to trust God for in this future, but she is willing to trust God's love for her. See, she says, may your word be fulfilled. See, when you submit to God, his promises can be fulfilled through you. How would your life be different today if you submitted your life to God? How would your life be different today if, if every morning when you woke up, you surrendered your life to the Christ of Christmas and you said, Lord, I am willing to live for you and with you today. See, the greatest need that this world ever has and needs is the love and grace of God. See, Mary was willing to take on the disruption of a baby, and that really saved the world. The message of a coming baby did not just disrupt Mary and Joseph's life, but, but let's be honest, th this baby born in Bethlehem came as a disruption to the world, came as a disruption to your life and to my life. 
The coming of this baby means that God wants to show his love to every person in this world. That God wants to disrupt our own lives. God wants to disrupt our own ways and our own thoughts. God wants to disrupt us with him. He wants to move our lives in such a way that when we focus on the baby of Christmas, we focus on the Savior of the world. That when we focus on the baby of Christmas, we can focus on the Savior that we need. See, the birth of Jesus is more than just an historical fact. No, the birth of Jesus is the result of a promise that affects your present life and impacts your future eternity. See, God, Jesus was born about 2,000 years ago, and he came as God's message of love to you, to me, to us, to the world. And Jesus comes into this world to disrupt our lives for the good. And so today I'm saying it's the time, it's the day, it's the moment that you know the baby of Christmas as the savior of the world and as the savior of your life. Are you like Mary? Are you willing? Are you willing to surrender your life to God? Are you willing to make Jesus the center of your life? Jesus is the center of the nativity set for a purpose. It's all about Jesus. And Jesus wants to be the center of your life so that your life would be all about Jesus. Do you need to surrender your heart to God today? Do you need to surrender your life to Jesus? Are you willing to make Jesus the center of your life today? If you're watching, and you say, you know what, that's what I need to do. I need to understand that God has come into my life to disrupt my own way of thinking so that I could know Jesus. If you're watching today, you say, yes, that's what's been missing in my life. Jesus hasn't been the center of my life. But today you say, I'm willing to make him the center of my life. We want to help you as you walk that out in day-to-day -day reality. I ask you to pick up your phone if you would and text us the word love to the number on your screen, 416-267-1189. Do that right now while I'm talking. There'll be a couple of prompts asking for your name and contact info. Please follow that as we want to help you as you make Jesus the center of your life. Let's, let's pray. Father, we thank you today for the story of Christmas, for the reality of a baby who is more than just a baby. He is the savior of the world, the savior of our lives. And today, Lord, I ask that you would disrupt our lives for the good, that you would cause us to think about Jesus, to know the real Christ of Christmas. Help us, help us to live wholeheartedly every day for Jesus. Help us to make Jesus the center of our lives. We give you all the glory and honor. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad that you've joined us today at Highway Online, especially for this Christmas message for the end of our Christmas series. I want to remind you that we will not be online with you again for the next two weeks. We will join you again the second week of January online. There's no service whatsoever next Sunday, the 25th. It's Christmas Day. But you can join us if you want in the building, the highway building on January the 1st. Uh, but we will not be online that day either. I just want to wish you a Merry Christmas, that you have a, a great time with friends or family or take some time to reflect on the Christ of Christmas this year. God bless you. Have a great week.